Hey guys, we're at Siesta Key. Chilling. Hey guys, we're at Siesta Key. Just uh, enjoying the sunset. And, um, you know, relaxing. You know, it's, it's, a lot of times thoughts come to my mind as I'm kind of reflecting and I think it's kind of cool to share some some of this, these thoughts sometimes um, as I'm going through transition I uh, think a lot about what I want the future to be like and um different than what I thought I would want my future to be like. When I really put thought into it, when I look for real meaning, I end up really just uh, thinking about how much more can I do to lay a foundation of helping others, you know? All Many of us get to come to a beach like this and relax and enjoy each other's families. Somewhere across the world, somebody grabbing, you know, hugging themselves, sitting in one spot, wondering when they're going to die as their body is in a state of starvation or lack of water. Some child is thinking about what the rest of his minutes or hours are going to be. Wondering if God's going to come through and do something for him or her. state of hopelessness and despair. While we're here having a completely different experience. And um, not to feel guilty about it because you know this is a blessing. We've been so blessed to even have time to think this way me to even be able to have time to reflect and think about these types of things is a blessing. But I do also believe that as we're greatly blessed, as we're filling up our own cups and our own ideas and our own satisfactions, our own dreams and desires at some point. I think reaching a higher level, and when I say higher level, deeper level, I mean a, a deeper level of connection with God, with the universe, with, with just everything that's moving on our behalf. I think that comes from that state of mind of, I believe it comes from the state of mind of moving from filling our own cups, our own lives, and doing something different, doing something to help somebody else. Taking, allowing our blessings to basically allowing our blessings to bless others. Many of us are just have a flow of blessings in our life. It's nothing, if, I don't believe there's anything to feel guilty or weird about. It's all about you have this abilities that other people don't. And what can we do 
to share our blessings. I'm not just talking about money. Some of you know, talents, abilities, ideas. You know, I was talking to somebody the other day about, you know, the, the, the elite people out there want us to basically understand that, oh, by 2050, we're going to have a food shortage. So if we have 10 billion people, we're going to have a food shortage. And what that's going to do is basically... Basically, uh, you know, put us in state of crisis. But these types of people, their only solution is they focus on CO2 emissions. And they focus on, you know, when they look at their problem, they look at, okay, well, we're not going to be able to do anything that's going to affect things positively enough to make a change. The only thing we can do is reduce population. That's kind of a sick way of thinking about things, you know? I don't believe that we have a... Not just because I don't believe it, but, you know, we waste so much food. You know, I look at these ants right here. They're working hard to take this bone, this chicken bone, and distribute it. While they have other ants, see that he's looking for more food. Some are looking, and once they find it, they're all working for distribution back to wherever they're going. We have a distribution problem. We've got all the technology that allows us to look for it, find it, identify it. We have people. That have too much, people have too little, and what we need to do is solve the problem of how do we get it from one person to the next. But it's never going to happen through government. Government's not going to be the distribution of wealth and resource solution. It has to be people. We have to. So we have to solve the problems we have to create the connection the apps whatever we have to do do it because when we do it whatever our motivation is when we do it we're doing it to you know we're, we succeed in service when governments do it they basically capitalize on control and power and because of that causes inefficiencies and causes waste. So the theory of communism, socialism, the whole idea of wealth distribution is great on the surface. But if there's no foundation of love, service, goodwill towards people, if that's not the foundation, if the foundation is control, power, and those types of greedy ambitions, then it will corrupt itself, because it's already corrupt from the beginning. So... I guess the um, thought of today is, what can you do? You may feel so insignificant to do anything about big problems. And I just want you to know you're not. Because there are people who have committed their lives. For-profit, non-profit businesses that have really committed their lives to solving problems. And if you can't start from scratch solve that problem or put a dent in it, then I believe it's your responsibility, not our responsibility, to connect and be part of the flow. Be part of the flow of that organization that's helping 
And don't just do the organization that you know you hear about all the time. With the you know they have the because a lot of these organizations they're spending ninety percent of their money on marketing and payroll, and ten percent of what they collect on the actual cause. You find organizations that aren't popular. They're doing the most work. The organizations that are doing the most and squeezing the most out of every penny, I guarantee are the ones that you don't hear about. They're not they're the ones that are not paying their CFOs or CSOs, you know, um, CEOs or CFOs millions of dollars a year. They're not spending millions of dollars in marketing every year. Okay. If you just do some research, you'll find people who are really making a difference. So, you're not significant. If you can give a dollar, if you can find dollars, if you can give a hundred dollars a month, whatever it is, to help people in need all around the world, I promise you, you will see it's the easiest way to step into the flow of prosperity in your life. It's the easiest way. And it's also the hardest thing to do when you're looking at a budget and you're looking at it with the eyes of what I'm taking away from my life is too hard or it's too much or I can't afford it or I got children or I got responsibilities. But you don't understand the, that mindset of scarcity in your life. That mindset of I don't have enough is producing more scarcity and I don't have enough. But when you have the mindset and heart of I'm gonna have a little bit of faith, I'm gonna do what I can with, you know, I'm gonna do what I can, help with what I can, uh, and give what I, a piece of what I have to help others. When you step into that flow, all of a sudden, God, the universe, everything is rooting for you and helping you so you can grow and also give more because you've become part of the flow of that cause because there's a people's crying in their heart hoping that somebody's going to help their situation there's desperate people and children out there and the universe is listening responding to those cries those desperate cries it's trying to but we have to take action and step into that flow and I promise you the easiest way to step into that flow is to be a giver so start giving change your life get your mind out of the gutter of scarcity stop thinking you don't have enough you have something to give start with what little you have and watch it grow and potential and opportunity Thank you guys. Love you guys. I hope uh, this helps somebody. Please share this. People need to hear this. People need to just go beyond, just unplug from their day-to-day -day routines and what they're going to do next on their next vacation, what they're going to buy next, and how they're going to use their spare time next. And just take a few minutes to consider and see what they can do. Love you guys. Peace.